Here we are today at the Ho Rainforest, located on the Olympic Peninsula on the western coast of Washington. Whereas Bremerton gets 49 inches of rain per year, this forest gets 14 feet of rain per year, in addition to fog and mist that contributes even more moisture. Deeper into this forest in the Olympic National Park, it is the quietest place in the United States. What with the sound muffling of the moss and the isolation from flight paths and civilization. Here's a herd of elk that was roaming around outside the entrance. That was pretty cool. This guy only had one antler. Males shed their antlers in the spring and they regrow back in the fall. Females, of course, don't have antlers. So we are going to be walking on the Hall of Mosses trail today. Notice the sign says, please stay on the trail. And I'm going to add that you need to please stay tight to the right because we live in civilization. So I'm going to give you a few little moss facts as we walk along the trail here uh, because there's a lot of moss in the rainforest. Mosses collectively provide more carbon offset than all of the trees in the world. Now we know that all the phytoplankton also holds more carbon than all of the trees in the world. So moss and phytoplankton are doing a huge service. Look, shelf mushrooms, huge service to us here on Earth. Mosses don't have roots. They have root-like rhizoids that are for anchoring to things only. They don't actually take up nutrients or water like plant roots do. And moss was the first plant on Earth. It evolved from algae. Algae was the first thing to uh, be able to adapt to life on land, which uh, the algae then evolved into lichen, liverworts, and moss. Now here is a really big tree. So it doesn't look that big in the pictures, but let me give you some perspective. Now see how these needles are flat? Hold on, I don't know where I'm pointing the camera. Okay, okay, here we go. So see how the branch is kind of flat? That is, I believe, a hemlock, which is the state tree of Washington. So, uh, let's get a comparison. So these look like fir needles, but it's a hemlock. So let's find a fir tree and make a comparison there. So here's a comparison of a western hemlock and a what I believe is a Sitka spruce tree. So I didn't find a fir tree because there's a lot of Sitka spruce. So that's a Sitka spruce. You can see how the needles go all the way around compared to the hemlock, which is flat. So here is a tree that has been cut through because it fell over the trail. So they had to cut a section out so that people could walk through. But look at, because you know, how do you count how old a tree is? By counting the rings. So here, if we start in the middle, we've got like one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now look where I am compared to the edge. This is ten right here. So as we get out, now those are the fat ones. As we get out, you see they get skinnier, and so it's going to be a while. So this is quite an old tree, at least a hundred. So, and then unfortunately, some yahoos chose to carve on it. Don't be a yahoo. Respect nature. Look, licorice fern. Remember those from Islandwood? Yum. So here we have a nurse log. So a nurse log is a stump or a tree that's fallen over and it now produces nutrients as it decomposes for mosses, 
uh, to grow on for plants, for tree seeds. We will see some examples of how trees have grown around a nurse log because it has used it as nutrients when it was a seedling. You can see that tree is growing out of it right there. You've got some moss on there. Uh, animals use it. Animals will eat bugs that are living in there. And uh, sometimes for shelter, you can see all the things that are growing on there uh, using its nutrients as it decomposes. So here you see a beautiful example of a nurse log in action. So a huge tree fell over. Some tree seeds fell onto that fallen tree. They started to grow. The tree started to decompose. The seedlings used those nutrients from the decomposition process to grow into these huge trees. When you can no longer see the nurse log, it now becomes a ghost log. And you can see the remnants of it there. Of this nurse log. Oh my gosh, it keeps going all the way down. Wow. Wow. So this is called a snag. It's a little different than a nurse log. They could kind of be the same thing or kind of not. So a snag is this tree that is still standing upright like that. So it's super tall. You will see all kinds of little holes in it because those are from like woodpeckers and other birds that peck into the bark to try to get the bugs that are in there helping with the decomposition process. So these dead trees that are still standing are very important to the forest ecosystem. Just as the nurse logs, the ones that have fallen over, are very important to the forest ecosystem. So on this next segment, I had a bit of a video camera malfunction. So my battery died and I didn't get the whole first half of the tree. So what we're doing is we are pacing off the length of this huge nurse log to see how tall it was when it was standing. Okay, battery died in my video camera, so I had to switch camera. So uh, we are at like 123 or something like that. So. 24, 125, 126, 127, 128, 129, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90. I don't know, we still got 91, 92, 93. Oh my goodness, 193. 193. Now it says the trunk is 190 feet long, but this huge trunk is only a portion of the originally standing tree. In the rainforest, Sitka spruces average 220 feet tall, and some grow to over 300 feet tall. Wowzers. Isn't this beautiful? I want to live in a forest. I'm gonna find one of these trees, live in it.